have it rest and belong. I don't know whether we got, we've got, we must have that up there. Rest and belong. It's just something I've been looking at since the conference and where we're going to be going over these next week. Rest and belong. And um, I found a little story that I hope you'll, you'll set the tone for it. Amen. If you're visiting with us, this is family. Please sit back and enjoy. And we say the journey. A young father in a supermarket was pushing a shopping cart with his little son. He was strapped in the front. The little boy was fussing, irritable, and crying. The other shoppers gave the pair a wide berth because the child would pull cans, cans off the shelf, throw them out of the cart. The father seemed to be very calm as he continued down each aisle. He murmured gently, Easy now, Donald. Keep calm, Donald. Steady, Donald. It's all right, Donald. A mother who was passing by was greatly impressed by this young father's calm and caring approach. She said, you certainly know how to talk to an upset child quietly and gently. And then bounding, bending down to the little boy, she said, what seems to be the trouble, Donald? Oh, no, said the father. He's Henry. I'm Donald. <laughs> <coughs> Same way, because, all right, what are we looking for in these times and situations that was facing us? We're looking for a little calm and we're looking for a little peace. Many people have the idea that storms and things happen in life because maybe we're being disobedient to God. But in actual fact, that's not necessarily so because they can also come when you're being obedient to God. And the enemy doesn't want you to fulfill what God's got for you to do. Amen. And so there are some things that could happen uh, to you and around you um, that you would wonder, where is Jesus? Well, that's the one thing. He never promised you <coughs> excuse me, to be without storms in your life, but he did promise you to be with you in every one of them. Amen. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And so, um, Father, as I, I share your word on rest and belong, you have a word in season for your people, Lord, for your, your church here at HFCC. I ask you to anoint me that I may speak words that are life, light, correct, and upright before you, Lord. And we give you praise now in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Let me just uh, paraphrase. I want to pray, paraphrase Mark 4 just as an example because I want to look at first rest or, and or peace, rest. Um, Mark 4 is where you've got Jesus. He's just finished preaching and he says to his disciples, hey, buddy, we're going to go to the other side. So they jump in a boat. Jesus is in the back of the boat, lies down on the cushions, goes to sleep. A big storm comes and the disciples come along and they, they uh, say to him, wake him up and say, hey, don't you care? that we're going to perish. And he gets up and he says, storm, be quiet, be still. And in fact, the words he used are the words that he used previously to shut demons up. So he said, be quiet, be still. And the storm obeyed him. Then he looks to his disciples and he says, why are you so afraid? He said, you don't have any faith. You don't have any faith left, if you like. And um, the next verse is very telling. It says that they looked in fear and that word fear is kind of misleading because they said they looked at him in fear and they said, who is this man? A lot of people preach out of that verse or, and say that they were scared of Jesus. That isn't the meaning of the word fear there. It means to be in awe and reverence. Some of these men were fishermen, so they have possibly been in storms. But whether they'd ever seen Jesus calm a storm, I don't really know. I don't know whether he, he had done that. But he said, where's your faith? In fact, do you not trust me enough? Do you not know that I can do anything? Well, obviously they didn't. They're like you and I who go to Jesus and say sometimes, Jesus, don't you care? And he says, of course I do. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And then people say, well, they had no faith and he's rebuking them. I don't think Jesus was rebuking them. When I read that, I see Jesus having compassion towards them and saying, you've been with me so long, but do you not trust me? Do you not understand that I can do anything? And that so applies to us today. If you're here this morning, God can do anything. He's the one that we've got to trust. He's the one we've got to believe in. He's the one that we've got to say, well, I've never seen this before, <clears throat> but are you going to do it? And he says, yes, it's in line with my word. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. It's very simple life. <clears throat> I know that I'm a little bit simple that way. But if it is good, then it must be God. The devil doesn't do anything good for us. He's going to take us the wrong way every time. But you know what? He said, you've got to learn to trust Jesus. 
It's not so much, therefore, the outside circumstances. It is the unbelief and the fear that can be in our heart of the, is he going to take care of it this time? And the answer is yes and amen to those who believe. I need to encourage you to believe this morning that the Jesus of the Bible is the same Jesus that you will see here today. The one you came for prayer this morning, that oppression that pastor had on his mind. And he said, no. And they prayed for, I believe when they lay hands. That was it. Never again. And you can mark it. It was about 10, 18, something like that. That's when I had lays on. You write that in the back of your Bible and you say, when that couple laid hands on me, Lord, I thank you for the anointing that destroyed the yoke of bondage. No more depression. Because it's not them. It's not me. It's his anointing. It's his presence. But you know what we've got to do? We've got to get to a position where we trust him. Now, the disciples saw him doing so many good things. We have a better thing. We have the word of God, the word which I avoid. If he is said by his stripes, you are healed, you are healed. Amen? And so in the midst of all this strife and turmoil, my, my question to you is, we need to trust him. Therefore, we need to go to the word for him. We need to, to see him in the word. We may need to make sure we're depending on him. We make sure that we're resting in him. And then only then, when we're resting in him, knowing that he is good, will we rest in the storm. We need to rest in the storms that come along with us. And God is taking us that way. Now, go to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9, it talks about a rest that remains for the children of God. Up in verse 2 in Hebrews 4, it said those children didn't enter into his rest because they didn't mix faith with the word they heard. And over the next weeks, we're going to get back into faith, teaching about faith, standing on faith, believing in faith, because we are heritage of faith. Amen. But the word rest there actually is a, a, a Hebrew and Greek means the same thing. It means an abode. It means a place of, of safety. It means a place that you live in. You know, the Israelites didn't move into the place of, of safety or abode for 40 years. Why? Because of fear and unbelief. When we hear God speak to us to do something and we, we need to act and be obedient immediately. We need not to procrastinate. We need to be able to say, yes, Lord, I know that's you, so we'll do it. You know, when in, even in the service, we need to hear God. And when we're talking in the front, you might be saying, while we're talking in, uh, in midst of worship, because we've heard God say something. Now, learn, Lord, when is it? When do we need to do this? So the timing of God for us is so important. But when I looked at this and I said, Lord, by faith, we're going to enter into your rest. Two meanings to the word rest. It's abode. But it almost means the rest of the story. Israel didn't move into the rest of the story. That was their promised land. For us, we've got to move into the rest of the story. And at the same time, trust him as we rest that he's going to do it. Because we cannot win this world for Christ without him working in and through us. Amen. And when you think about, well, what is our abode? What is our rest? The original, if you like, Israel had a natural abode, a natural land. Ours is described in, in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And what, what happened to them? Um, where did I put that? The outpouring in, in uh, Acts, chapter 2, was the, um, let me read it, the wonderful gift of fullness of the manifested presence of God, which we're after, produced incredible fruit and power after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The spiritual fruit was an amazing level of unselfishness and generosity. The power was miracles of healings, deliverance, raising the dead, resulting in thousands of souls saved. I believe that God is drawing us by His Spirit into a place of rest, a place of peace in the house of God. But also He's drawing us into a place where we can believe for the rest of the story, for the next journey, part of the journey we're on. Because you have a journey, you have a destiny. We're not going to allow the devil, the enemy, to come and stop us fulfilling our destiny. It can't be so. We're not going to allow it. Amen? And sometimes, you know, when you, you think about rest, let me just describe it this way. I, I, we've traveled a fair bit with hotels and what have you. And you rest, and they're good hotels. But you never rest until you truly come home. When I get into where we belong, that's what happens to people. 
If you are not a piece in the house, maybe you don't belong here. If you are a piece, maybe you belong here. Now you say that, that being hot. No. What I want is that we need to be planted in the right house. Okay? In order for you to bear fruit for your life, not me. You don't ever come to a church for the pastor. You need to come because God's brought you here. When he's placed you here, you'll be... You know, actually, I won't go off on this direction, but anyway. Um, you, you may even feel a little bit uncomfortable when you first walk into a, a new house, a new, a new church. You may feel uncomfortable. But if you can get past that for the first couple of weeks, because people do, they come in and they say, I wonder if they'd accept me, whether they like me, am I going to be dressed right, etc., etc. There's a natural thing. But we always tell people, go back as God called you. Because we want you here to complete us. We want you here for your gifting to complete what we're doing. And if you're not meant to be here, that means there is another church and another body that is missing your complete, your part that's coming to. Amen? So I want to encourage you this morning that, that, that we enter into a rest of this place. We mustn't miss out because of fear and unbelief. You know, fear and unbelief partners up to rob us of the things of God. Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to be? I've been doing people over the, over the last years, but even the last weeks, who fear and doubt came to steal their gifting from this very platform. And we're not going to have it. We're not going to have that. We want us to labor into that rest. Hebrews 4.11 says this, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man falls, fall after the same example of unbelief. The word labor means make haste and give diligence to perform it. So let me tell this to you. When God tells you to do something, know that it's the time. Be quick, swift, and obedient to do it quickly and quietly. Amen? We don't need the approval of man once we have heard God. Amen? So I believe it's a time for you and I to enter into the rest of God, the rest of God's work, which for me, for us, fruit and power. Fruit and which is unselfishness and generosity, or we call it kindness. And then the power of God. We need to be able to see the glory of God and the miracles of God. Everybody say amen. Why not? The world needs it. Without that, we're going to have a problem. So I believe it's a time to possess that rest, but it's not by ourselves. I believe that this rest, and this is a place of rest. This is a house of rest. This is a house of fresh manner. This is a house of his presence. This is a house that is of peace. I believe that that is what we have for you here. And we want each and every person to receive it. And please understand, I don't want anybody to leave. You understand that. Any pastor who says, well, I want you to leave is really stupid. It's, it's not that. But if I don't tell you what God has told us, we won't be blessed and you won't be blessed. Amen? I want you to be blessed in wherever God tells you. But please don't leave. Is that all right? I mean, all right. Don't worry. I get into that because, yeah, because you're watching by live stream um, and you need to love us. Amen. But I said, okay, we've got blessed. Have we, I keep, every time I look around, I ever get to see whether they made a, a thingy. Have you made a thingy? What do you call it? So rest. No, still not there. They're very... Ah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Rest and belong. Okay, we, we're talking about the rest. So we're going to move into that rest. But where should we rest? It is the local church. I want you to go for a couple of scriptures. Ephesians 2, verse 19 in the Living Bible, the second half says this. You are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. In 1 Timothy 3, verse 15, in the Good Word, God's Word translation, the second half said this. God's family is the church of the living God, the pillar of and foundation of truth. Amen? Even in the Garden of, of Eden, God said it's not good that man be alone. Amen? And so he created Adam and he created Eve. Uh, Rick Warren said this in, in his book. He said, we are created for community, fashioned for fellowship, and formed for a family. In other words, there are no lone rangers in the body of Christ. Amen? It's not right that you go out by yourself. God doesn't want that. Oh, the ones at the front get picked off or the ones at the back get picked off. But I found these. If you want to go and have a look at something, look at the word in your concordance for together. He says, the Bible says this in a number of places. 
we are put together, joined together, built together, members together, heirs together, fitted together, held together, and caught up together. You're not on your own anymore. Amen? That's what God's family is. God wants you to be held together in relationship. Romans 12, 5 in the NIV. Because we will belong to each other for eternity. You need to get on with one another. In Christ, we are we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. You know, following Christ doesn't just mean believing. It also means belonging. We need to belong to some place. Some place. You and I need to belong to one another because the church is not a building. It's not just an organization. It's an organism that continues to move and to grow and to add to and to subtract from. Amen? Now, so the same as the organs in the body are connected to one another, it is the same in Christ's body. You were created, created for a specific role. And I want you to go to Romans 12 in the message, verses 4 and 5. Because if, if you're a believer but you're not connected, you'll miss the purpose, the second purpose for your life. You need to be connected or attached to a living local church. If, and you're watching my live stream, and uh, or you're visiting with us, please have nothing against any, any church. But if it's not living, leave it. If we don't meet your need, leave us and find where you will have a living relationship. Amen? You need a living organism to be part of, that the blood pumps through. Amen? The Bible tells that each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? If the organ or any organ is cut off and the blood supply is gone, it shrivels and dies, correct? But then right, listen to this. Disconnected and cut off from the lifeblood of a local body, your spiritual life will wither and eventually cease to exist. I believe that. Believe that. Absolutely, totally. Now let me give you an example of the toe. Okay, this week I, I should have been having, uh, you know, you have five toes on each foot. The toe next to my big toe, they were going to amputate it this, this week. And the reason for that, I tried to blame somebody for dropping a weight on it, but they wouldn't accept it. What I actually did is I kicked the bed. And I, I broke it and things, and my wife didn't take care of me. And so I had to, I was well, ashamed. But it's true, I'll show you my toe. And so, you may by why there's a, there's a meaning to this, okay? So it was broken, but I, I'm really stubborn sometimes, and I thought, ah, doesn't matter. Leave it. not sometimes, thank you. So I didn't do anything about it, so I left it. And then I was, we were playing rugby in the water when we went away with the pastors. And then your loving, delicate pastor Tony jumped on it from a great height. And rebroke it. So again, I played the hero and kept my mouth shut and never said anything. And then I went, and so, you know, hold on, we've got this disconnected toe. So after a while, I said to Tyler, I said, this is really sore. Really, really. And it's like this. So Ben, she said, we'll go and see someone. So I went to, I, I tried to pull it back in a number of times. You know when you pull your dislocated finger back in when you're playing rugby? You know, I tried to put it, it wouldn't work. So I went to the guy, and I really thought he was going to put me under and just straighten it out. He looked at me and laughed. He said, I could do nothing with that. Look at it. He said, the only thing I can do with that is cut it off. <laughs> cut it off. I said, but I was born to have five toes. He said, no, no, you can get away with it. It's fine. I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Well, on the, that was Wednesday night. Thursday morning, I come to prayer. And Una is a Pastor Megan and Pastor Sean. She sometimes gets up very early at 5 o'clock on a Thursday morning, comes to prayer, and that was one of the mornings. And I was telling the story about her father who broke my toe, and now it has to get cut off. And she looked at me with fear in her eyes. And she said, you can't do that. She said, I'll pray for you and it'll be okay. And I thought, I won't pray for it. Pray that it doesn't hurt when I cut it off. And then... John and Dawn did the same thing, and Tony did the same thing. And so what I decided to do was I'm not going ahead with the, the surgery. I'm going to, to believe because it doesn't hurt anymore. It's got a lot smaller, I think, 
<laughs> but it's not hurting. So I'm believing with you that it's healed. Now, why of that story? Because if I cut it off, I am not complete. If you don't come to this church and you're meant to, we are not complete. Come on, think about it. Because that toe getting cut off from the body will wither and die. If you are not connected to the right body for you, if you are not joined to the right place, even though you may be going to church, and if you're watching my live stream, if you're going to church, it's not the right place. You need to choose the right place. The blood flow has to be the same. Amen? Is that all right? And so anyway, you probably won't ever think about anything but my tone now, but we are not complete with you, without you. Amen? Now, why do we need a church family? Uh, some of you, um, and if you're watching my live stream and you're not in, in church, let me encourage you. I am a believer in church because God's word is a believer in, in church, wherever you want to go. Amen. And um, when I thought about it, I've been told that you can, you can be a Christian. Absolutely. But will you mature? Will you grow outside the local body? My answer to you is no. If you're watching my live stream, and I will show you from Scripture now, the ability to grow outside of the body has not been designed by God to work. You'll be a lone ranger. You'll get picked off. It will hurt you. You need to be joined together to complete somebody. Why do you need a church? A church family identifies you. Who are we? We're a heritage of faith. Amen. We believe the word. We believe you can have what the word says. Do what the word says you can do. You can become who it says you can become. Amen. We are heritage of faith. Amen. And so when I looked at that, if you go to John 13, I think it's 1335, it says your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And when we get together as a church family of all different ethnic groups, bachelors, cult cultures, the world looks at it and we express that together we are the body of Christ. When we love together, it is a powerful witness to, to the world. Number two, a church family stops us being self-centered. Because the local church is the classroom for learning how to get along with one another. Amen. Because we have to learn to get along with one another. And then what happens, we learn to love and to be kind and care and share and, and, and be kind to people. And then what happens? When one hurts, we all hurt, according to Corinthians. And then when one gets honor, we all get honor. We work as one body together. Amen. So that's two things. You, you, a church identifies you because you know why? You need to be committed. When Christ said, I get, we've got to make disciples, you can't make a disciple by yourself. Who's going to disciple you? It, does, it doesn't make, make sense. And number two, it stops you being self-centered. It's not about you. Number three, a church family helps to develop spiritual strength. Amen. Um, we won't grow. We, we will grow to an extent coming here. Uh, having a worship service, uh, coming to Bible study. But where we truly grow is when we start to serve within the house. And please understand me, I didn't put this together to get you to serve in the house. It wasn't it. It's I wanted you to rest. I want you to belong because there is fruit that comes to belonging. Amen. It's so much easier to live life. In Ephesians chapter 4, um, verse 16, in the second part, in the New Living Translation, got some really different ones today. The Bible says, as each part does its own special work, it helps other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Amen. Over 50 times in the New Testament, the phrase one another or each other is mentioned. 50 times. We are commanded to love each other, to pray for each other, encourage, admonish, greet, serve, teach, accept, honor, bear with each other's burden, forgive, Submit and be devoted to each other. That is biblical membership of the body of Christ. Amen. That's biblical membership. That's our family responsibilities. Amen. And God expects us to fulfill them through the local fellowship, local church. We're supposed to do that to everybody, but you fulfill them. And you know what family responsibilities are? Everybody, we all got family responsibilities. And I, I thought I was taking care of my wife's responsibilities yesterday. Why? And you say, why? I got up and she moans at me. But I got up early at four o'clock to, to study and I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do her washing. Mm. Okay. So I got up and I got the washing and I, by the time she got up, I'd had 
two or three done, hadn't I, darling? I had. So I know what she's like. And you probably heard me mention it. I, I smile because I knew. I said, well, she said, what are you doing? I said, ah, oh, I thought I'd get up and, and help you and do your washing. And the first word she said, my washing? I said, yes, your washing. Since when did the washing become my washing? You've got no dirty stuff in there. I said, yes, but I'm doing your job. Oh, oh, now I'm doing your, you're doing my job. Because then we went outside and hung the washing out. I said, and I knew because now I'm playing. Now I've got her going. Hey, everybody thinks she's so nice, but wish, man. She's sitting here, it's okay. And she said, you're hanging my washing out? My, I said, but darling, it's your job. And that, that was it. That was it. No breakfast, no nothing. It was fine. But we laugh about it because it's our family responsibility. It's not her job or my job. Although I don't ask her to cut the lawn. I don't ask her. What? Don't point your finger at me, woman. For those who are new here, my wife heckles from the front. It's fine. But, but isn't it the truth? It's, it's our life. It is our job. That's what the family of God is about. It is what do we do together? How do we live our life together in the church serving one another? Amen. And uh, now you think about that. But, you know, sometimes we like to, if you like, isolate ourselves because when no one else is around, we don't get frustrated so much with our way of doing things, our preferences. But that's false. We need one another to be able to grow. True relationships are built sometimes when there is conflict. They're built sometimes when there are things that we, we can learn from one another. Real maturity comes, uh, shows up when our relationships are challenged somehow. Amen? We, we need to be able to get through that and mature. And I'm telling you, the body of Christ will help us mature. Amen? It, and it's so, so wonderful to be able to do that. So we need more, I believe, more than the Bible to grow. We actually need people. We need people. You know, iron sharpens iron. We need people to rub up against. Amen. So, number four, the body of Christ needs you. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 17 says, A spiritual gift is given to each one of us as means of helping the entire church. And otherwise, let me say it this way. Each one of you is a gift and has a gift. This body will not be complete without the gifts. Okay? We need the gift of people Greeting at the doors as well as what we think of the bigger gifts, the worship team. It is not so. You don't just need me. You need people to serve you. Amen. We all come together joining and sharing and having spiritual gifts. Also, I believe that the local house is the place that the gifts are grown. Home groups, this house, so you can begin to develop your spiritual giftings. That's what our job, that's what my job is, to help you develop them. Amen. And, and when you do that, um, you may find that you have a wider gift. You may be called, like some of us are called, to go out to other parts of the body, all right, other parts of the church. But let me make this statement to you, which is so clear. God has promised not to build your ministry or Ian Slack's ministry. He has promised to build his church, amen? That's what he's done. He said, I promise to build my church. Number five, a church family will assist you from backsliding. Amen. I don't really like the word backsliding. It's, it's kind of it's such a negative connotation, but it's the truth, isn't it? It's, it's a church family. If you see somebody who's been coming regularly and they don't come, phone them. Ask them. What will happen is that we can encourage people to be in it. We have pastoral care. We don't phone you just to keep you in church. We phone you to see that you're okay. How are you? What are you doing? It is your choice to come to church. You can't force people to come to church. You don't want to do that. But we want to make sure that you're not hurting, that you're not sick, or you don't need a helping hand. That's why we call you. And so that's why you call people. You know when the scripture talks about um, bad company corrupts good morals, it doesn't take much for in this world today for people to be drawn aside. That's why when we have family communion, you might ask, Ian, why do you repent? Why do you say you're sorry for if you've hurt anybody? 
because sometimes it happens that we do mistakenly, if you like, hurt people. I don't know anyone in our leadership team, anyone in our ministry of helps that deliberately goes out to hurt someone. We don't wake up in the morning saying, well, we better hurt so-and-so. That doesn't work. Amen? We, we want to be a, a servant to you. Amen? And so our job is to encourage you to, to build along with you if you're wandering across the path. So membership in the family of God is neither inconsequential or is it something casually to be ignored. I believe the church is indestructible and will exist for eternity. Amen. Because Jesus said in Matthew, he said, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Christ hasn't changed. Christ gave his life because he loved the church and he gave his life for it. And so for you, we need to love our spiritual family. Amen. And, and so we've come through a wonderful, wonderful uh, weeks with guest speakers. We're excited. Things are happening. We're thank, thanking God. Now we're going to say, okay, Lord, I can continue to thank you as I believe for the rest of my calling, for the rest of this year, for the rest of the month. I can now, Lord, believe you to calm everything down. Let me rebuild myself up again by going to the word and trusting you, no matter what circumstance and situation you face. But no matter what situation you face, you don't have to do it alone. The church is here to help you. And I want to encourage you not only to rest, but to belong. If you're watching my live stream and you, you, you're, you're actually not with us. We, we pastor, I pastor people by live stream all over the country. We've got them in Perth and Sydney and what have you. Who We encourage the local church, but there are some people who haven't found one that will suit them. So we keep encouraging them. Go in and go into your local church. Get in a place that's going to love on you because there's more to it than just the word. We have to have flesh together. And so... I believe that we can encourage you to do that and we encourage you to be in the house, not just to serve in the house. I believe in it. But when you get a hold of this and say, this is the place I belong, this is the place I want to serve, amen? And I, I believe that now's a time as we look to the future, where we're going in the next six months and 18 months and two years and whatever, I believe we need to be joined together as one body. And I found a, a video which I'd like, um, for, and the worship team can come up if they would. I've, I found a, a, a video which I'd like to put before you because if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, this will, will also assist you. But also, this video talks about belonging. If you'd like to put that on for me.
such um, that was such a, a specific um, word for me when I, I started to study. And I said, Lord, I want people to belong to the kingdom first. So with every head bowed, every eye closed. What a wonderful service we've just had. We've experienced the presence of God. And I know His presence. And I know Him personally. And I want to ask if you've been watching this, do you know Jesus personally? I want to invite you to become a part of the family of God. I'd love to ask you to pray with us. If you've watched the service and you say, but you know what? I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know him. This prayer is for you. Salvation is now. Don't put it off. Don't leave it. Come along with me and pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me clean of my sins. Bring me into your family, Lord. Make me the head and not the tail. Take me from darkness into light, from sickness into health. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price that I may have eternal life with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. But more than that, I can live a successful life here on earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that and, and you'd like to, we'd love to be able to actually send you some resources. If you would like that, please contact us via the phone or email. We'd love to get some things into your hand. And if you're in the local area, we'd love for you to join us for our next Sunday service. We're open. All are welcome. God bless. And if you prayed that, welcome to the family.